Humeral shaft fractures. There are several important points in humeral shaft fracture. Number one, it can be treated without surgery in the majority of cases. An operative treatment gives a satisfactory outcome. A perfect alignment is not important for an acceptable functional result. Number two, radial nerve palsy is not uncommon. Check for the neurovascular deficit before and after reduction, especially rest and finger extension. Holistein Lewis fracture, which is a spiral fracture of the distal third of the humerus, commonly associated with neuropraxia of the radian nerve in approximately 22% of the cases. Number three point is plating of the humerus is better than iron rod. Fracture location in between muscle insertion can cause fracture deformity. For example, the fracture in the proximal third, which is distal to the pectoralis major attachment and proximal to the deltoid tuberosity, will lead to adduction of the proximal fragment. A fracture that is distal to the deltoid tuberosity will lead to abduction of the proximal fragment by the deltoid pole. The fracture will be shortened because of the pole of the triceps and biceps. And the radian nerve anatomy. It causes in the spinal groove about 14 cm proximal to the lateral epicondyle and 20 cm proximal to the medial epicondyle. The radial nerve enters the anterior compartment of the arm approximately 10 cm proximal to the elbow joint. Treatment. Non-operative treatment is used in the majority of cases. This is the acceptable alignment guideline. We accept less than 20 degree anteroposterior deformity and less than 30 degree varus valgus and less than 3 cm of shortening. How do you do conservative treatment? Usually, cohabitation is splint in the majority of cases, sometimes a hanging arm cast, which will be converted to a functional humeral brace in about 7 to 10 days when the swelling and the pain is less. Sometimes the splint is used temporarily in multiple trauma patients. The brace can cause fracture reduction through soft tissue compression. The result of functional brace is healing in the majority of cases about 90% with minimal complication, although virus is common. Alignment usually acceptable and they have great of motion of the elbow and the shoulder. Contraindication to the use of the brace is if the patient is unreliable or uncooperative, if there's a brachial plexus injury, if there's a vascular injury, or if there's a bad bony or soft tissue injury. Indication for surgery will be open fractures, vascular injury, floating elbow, loss of reduction, polytrauma patient, brachial plexus injury. The surgery are usually one of the three things. A plate would have few reoperation and a few complications, a rod or external fixture. The plate will give you the best functional outcome. The rotator cuff is not violated, so there is no shoulder pain. Less reoperation, less complication than the rod. The union, more than 90%. External fixture is rarely used. It is used when the fracture is contaminated or dirty. The pins may have to be inserted in an open technique. If you put the pins away from the fracture, 
you may have less stability of the fixator, but it is safer. Approach is anterolateral, and this is in the proximal two third. The nerve lies posterior to the intermuscular septum, so it's difficult to see the nerve. In order for you to see the nerve, you need to search for it between the brachialis and the brachioridialis distally. The posterior approach is used for the distal third of the humerus. It's either triceps splitting or triceps sparing. It could allow for direct exposure of the radial nerve. The triceps sparing can expose up to 90% of the posterior humerus. The problem with this approach, if you have to go back again to remove the plate or to treat an ununion, it becomes really a harder operation. Now we talk about the technique. We usually use compression plate and we bend the plate to allow compression on the near and far cortex. Usually we use 4.5 millimeter plate and the screw, which is large fragment set. The humerus is subject to larger rotational forces, so use a staggered hole in a plate is probably ideal. Sometimes you put a lag screw and neutralization plate if it is of like fracture. Sometimes you will use bridge plate if the fracture is comminuted going to use a posterior approach for the distal third because of the posterior surface is flat. The plate allows for immediate weight bearing for crutches or walker use. Locking the plates, you can use it for osteoporotic patient. Sometimes 3-5 locking plate is used instead of 4-5 plate. I am rod, the indication is segmental fracture, osteoporotic fracture, pathologic fracture, or common uted. The I am rod will have a high complication rate than the plate and shoulder pain. The rod will give you callus or endocondial ossification, more callus than the plate. The distal screws may have complication in the plate. If you go from anterior to posterior, you risk a musculocutaneous nerve. If you go from lateral to medial, you risk the radial nerve. External fixture is used in infected cases or contaminated with bats of tissue injury. Sometimes it's used temporarily. Watch the position of the radial nerve when you insert the screws. Usually uh, there are three complications. Varus. Common, especially after conservative treatment, and that does not affect the function. The second one is non-union. Check vitamin D25 level. Usually use a plate and bone graft. If there is rod, removal of the rod and plate and bone graft. If the non-union is hypertrophic, use a compression plate alone. Vascularized free fibular bone graft. Use it with internal fixation for a failed conventional technique, especially if there is a gap on the bone more than 5 cm. The last complication is radial nerve palsy. So we got the varus, we got the non-union. Now the third one is radial nerve palsy. The incidence varies. 15% is a probably a reasonable incidence. Primary radial nerve palsy occurs from the injury. Increased incidence with distal third fracture, which is holostine loss fracture, and mid-shaft transverse fracture. Usually, in closed fracture, it is in neuropraxia of the nerve. And in open fracture, consider neurotemesis, means the nerve may be lacerated. Open fracture, absolute indication to explore the nerve if the open fracture is associated with the radial nerve palsy. Explore the radial nerve and fix the fracture. If the fracture is closed and you have complete radial nerve palsy, 
The usual treatment is cast, brace, and observation for the radial nerve pulsing. Secondary can occur from surgery or it can occur from reduction. If it occurs from surgery, I'm going to watch for radial nerve recovery. If it occurs from reduction, it's controversial. Either I explore or watch for radial nerve recovery. The result of the radial nerve palsy, 90% will recover in 3 to 4 months. So how are you going to do that? Now obtain EMG and nervous studies about 6 weeks. Fibrillation is bad, polyphasic is good. Monitor the brachioradialis muscle because this is the first muscle to recover. The extensor indices is the last one to recover. The wrist extension and radial deviation recovers first. Explore the nerve if the nerves fail to recover in 4 to 6 months. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.